So I sat down to watch the news uh, just to learn something, and it was a little disturbing when I discovered uh, the following. Uh, uh, let's see. Here. On the economy, according to the Senate Budget Committee and the Congressional Budget Office, welfare spending in America has crossed one trillion dollars for the first time in history, and that doesn't include Social Security or Medicare. Here's how it all breaks down: welfare, one point oh three trillion dollars; Social Security, seven hundred thirty-one billion dollars; defense spending. Bob, please turn the phone off. Seven hundred billion. Huh. So that really surprised me because uh, cash welfare to single moms is, uh, is, is about 1% of that figure. It's, uh, I think they, uh, as we'll see, it's a, it's a tiny number. So trillion dollars, that's actually pretty disturbing. Uh, so I traced this thing down and uh, it turns out that, that sure enough, the, you know, because the, the Medium uh, Matters website has some information, I, could, I found the original report. It's, uh, it's right here. It's from the Congressional Research Service. And uh, let me just share with you. It's actually, it's, it's, uh, it's written to the Senate Budget Committee, attention, Paul Winfrey by uh, Karen Spur, who's a specialist in domestic social policy. And so she, uh, the subject of this memo, it says, Spending for federal benefits and services for people with low incomes fiscal year 2008 to fiscal year 2011. An update of Table B1 from CRS reports R41625 modified to remove programs for veterans. Now, see, pay attention to this one. See, they removed the veterans because they thought it might actually offend some of the veterans if their spending was included in the category of, of welfare stuff. So I looked through this thing, and, um, and sure enough, there's a table two in it, a big table, that goes on for pages. And it says, spending for federal benefits and services for people with low income by program uh, you know, over these fiscal years. And so I look through, and it, it's really interesting to see all these welfare programs. Now, let's say here's family planning, uh, transitional cash and medical services for refugees. Then I skip down, I get to state children's health insurance program. Oh, okay. Uh, voluntary Medicare prescription drug benefit for low-income seniors of the entire Medicaid program. So, uh, uh, so you know, my in-laws received Medicaid to take care of their son, uh, they took care of him for 38 years, and my father-in-law was a burly construction guy. I'm not sure that he uh, would appreciate being uh, being called a welfare recipient. Uh, no, breast and cervical cancer early detection. That seems like welfare. The whole Indian Health Service. Let's see. Uh, temporary assistance for needy family. That's traditional welfare. That's about uh, $6.6 uh, $6 billion. So it's about 0.6% of that uh, $1.03 trillion. And here's supplemental security income for the uh, aged and disabled. That's a bit bigger. That's $60 billion. Uh, additional child tax credit. Uh, the earned in income tax credit for workers. Uh, the refundable component. Now, that's a little weird to call that welfare. Uh, there's food stamps, okay, and school breakfast and lunch. Uh, WIC for, uh, uh, for moms and young kids, okay, we got that. Uh, let's see what else we got. A nutrition program for the elderly. That, that's sort of a weird one for welfare. Federal work study for college students, $986 million. Pell grants for college students. Education for homeless children. That seems like a program that might be... Uh, uh, you know, of some value. Uh, let's see. Uh, mathematics and science partnerships, improving teacher quality state grants, uh, single family rural housing loans. And jumping down. Oh, water and waste disposal for rural communities. Now, these rural communities really shouldn't be dependent on the federal government for their water and waste disposal. They should deal with the consequences of, uh, you, know, the, you know, not having a good water system, I guess. Uh, supportive housing for the elderly and the disabled, okay. And then there's Section 8 housing and public housing, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll give we'll give people credit for that. These are uh, uh, Section 8s about about one percent of the one trillion, and public housing is about the same. Uh, at least this is broken down here. Uh, Older Americans Act for Family Caregivers Program. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, uh, Ten of social services. That's about eight billion. Child support enforcement, uh, child care, Head Start, adoption assistance, foster grandparents. There's a welfare program that's really uh, it's really grown. Job Corps, okay. Weatherization assistance program and the low income home energy assistance program. 
so here you see there's this long list of welfare programs. And the really striking thing here is that it seems to me that the definition of welfare here is any program that seems to help people. And uh, you know, there's a wide variety of things. And that if you're getting a program from the government that is supposed to help people live a better life, that this is somehow unworthy and it's a form of welfare. Uh, and uh, now, if you uh, uh, if you don't believe that, you're probably not a uh, Fox News viewer, apparently, because uh, because they they're sitting there defining uh, a huge chunk of the entire federal budget as welfare that's serving millions and millions of Americans who would really be surprised to discover that that's uh, that that's what's going on.